everyone and welcome to today's video. It is going to be a little bit of a different one. I get lots of sort of comments, private messages, requests and stuff like that about how I prepare, cure and everything else my soap and how I get it packaged and onto the shelf ready to be sold. So today I thought seeing as I've been cutting soap today I would take you along and show you the processes I'm going to use for one soap in particular. So in the last video you would have seen me um, cutting the Hawaiian honey blossom. If not I'll leave a link up in the corner so you can go and check it out. Um, but I'm now going to show you what I actually do after I turn the camera off. What I actually do with the soap to get it into that sort of prepared state to get it onto the cure rack and then later on get it all labelled and ready to go. So let's go and see what I am going to do. So you always see me cut the first part of the bar and I take that piece off and put it to one side and then I basically get 11 bars of soap out of my cutter and I save this one to, for doing a little bit of photo work. So the first thing I actually do is I go through the 11 bars which I have got over here. Alright so what I do is I go through all of these bars, quite often when I'm pulling them off I already know which one I was going to go for and I'm pretty sure it was this one. What I look for is one that has got a really pretty top on it and one where I actually like the swirl design, doesn't have to be both sides, just one of those sides. And then with just this one piece of bar to start with, I grab myself a vegetable peeler, I do not have expensive tools for beveling my soap. This isn't my favourite one, I don't know where my favourite vegetable peeler is. Um, this one I find takes a little bit too much off for my liking, but I just, I don't know where my other one's gone. So this one will do for now. And all I now do is I run this along the edges. So all I'm going to do is take the peeler and run it just down the edges of my soap, just to take that real sharp corner off of these soaps just so when you do go to use them they're not too uncomfortable to use on that first sort of wash once these have all hardened up so I have cleaned that soap up get all those bits off my peeler and then the next thing I do is I pop it down on my bench I take my soap stamp and I stamp just down into the bottom and kind of in the center or as centered as I can get it. Just keeping in mind that this soap is still quite soft so you do have to be careful not to squish it, not to push too hard. But that is what it then looks like. So it has got my logo stamped into it. Then it is time to take some social media pictures. So I bring over both of my pieces, the sort of block and my single bar that I've got. I have got my light so I can actually bring my light over to get rid of the shadows. I am really trying to work on doing better photos this year than what I have done in the past. Just make sure I've got all of my bits from off of the mat here. And these are just, I don't think, oh I do. Where are these from? I got these from Drops Backdrop and they're just a vinyl printed sheet and I use it to take all my photographs on. You can see in the background here that is just a plain white one that I have got. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to turn off the volume on my phone so it doesn't go off and then I just take a couple of pictures. Now I've actually got my phone set up. I don't know if this is just a Samsung thing or if the um, iPhones do it as well, but I've actually got my camera set up so I can um, voice activate it, which means that if I've got myself into a bit of a precarious position, got that perfect shot, but if I know if I move, I will end up messing up the shot, I can actually just talk to it and tell it. So I quite often people can hear, hear me yelling words in the shed and it's because I'm actually trying to take the photographs. So I get myself all lined up. I come back from off the picture so I can crop it. And once I'm happy with that one, capture. And it's taken my photo. I also come in from a couple of different angles and we'll go from there, capture. So basically what I now have, I have my pictures on here. We'll see if that one turns around. So I can then take them inside and edit them. So I'm pretty happy with those two that have come up. Usually if I'm not happy, I will take a few more just to get a few different shots. I also change the size on my phone. Generally I work in a full to do the 
video pictures and then for my social medias I take a few at that sort of square ratio and we'll come move it in a little bit capture capture so take a few different shots so then I can actually pick which ones that I really want to work with I'm also going to do one on my soap cutter today as well so I'm going to pull that into the shot here and what I tend to do when I'm doing my soap cutter, I will do the soap cutter one as the absolute last one because it does put marks on the soap and I don't want it to move. So we'll just lift that up, get that one lined up where I want it to go. That's it. I'm just going to pull it down onto the soap like so and then take a couple more photos. capture all right so now that I have got enough photos I've got my marks in this soap so I am going to finish cutting this one down I'll take all these off of my soap cutter here and what I do usually I have a tray which is what you see me putting them on but I've got so many soaps on trays at the moment I don't so what I've been doing is just lining them up over on the bench top so I've just brought my cutter back over here going to line them up on this bench top here and then I am going to leave them sit here a minimum of 24 hours depending what the weather is doing it's a little bit humid today so it may even be 48 hours before I actually come back and I finish tidying up the rest of the soaps so I'll bevel them stamp them and we'll do some more photos so we'll be back in just a moment for you guys but I'm going to leave these here for about 24 to 48 hours Alright, so we are ready to finish um, tidying the rest of these soaps up and stamp them. Now I always get questions about how long I leave my soaps before I actually stamp them and it really is dependent upon what the weather is doing. So in winter time they generally need 24 to 48 hours of just sitting on the side and that depends upon how cold it is, how dry our climate is and things like that. In summer, I may actually need to leave these three or four days before I can actually finish tidying them up because we have such high humidity, they take a little bit longer to dry out and they also take a little bit longer to cure in summer as well because of that humidity. Um, today, this morning, when I headed out down the gym, uh, it was about 5.30 this morning, they said that it was 100% humidity, so that was, that's really bad. Um, now I think we're sitting about 90% humidity. We are due some rain today, so these do take a little bit longer to um, dry out during those sort of weather conditions. I will admit right now that these soaps have actually been sitting here a lot longer than three or four days. They've actually been sitting here for about a week and a half. The reason being is the tool I actually use to do the cleanup of my soap, which I'll show you in a moment, is just a very cheap vegetable peeler. But I've got two of them and the one that I actually prefer to use, it's gone. I have no idea where it has gone. Um, when I went to do this, couldn't find it. I then actually went through all my drawers. I've cleaned them out. I've washed, put everything that were in the drawers through the dishwasher to give everything a really good sort of summer, springtime clean sort of thing. And this vegetable peeler I love to use has just disappeared out of my workshop. So I don't know where it is, but I do have another one. So I will show you how I'm going to do this with my other vegetable peeler. So there are heaps of special tools out there that you can buy for actually planing and beveling um, your soaps. And by beveling, what I mean is putting this nice sort of um, angle corner onto your soaps. And the reason I like to do it is because when you get a fresh bar of soap, these can actually be quite sharp and unpleasant to use until you actually get that soap all nice and smoothed out. So I like to actually put that bevel on just to make it a nicer experience to use. And all I use is a vegetable peeler. As I said, this is not my favorite one. This one does take off a little bit more than what my other vegetable peeler is. The other one I've got is one of those with a 
handle and then it's like a Y shape with the peeler going across the top and I actually just find that one takes off less soap when I'm doing this but like I said it has completely disappeared out of my workshop I have absolutely no idea where it's gone I'm gonna have to find myself a new one but this one is going to do for now all you need to do is find one that actually works well for you you can even pick up those little two dollar packs where you get five in the pack and use those these work well as well I just need something that sits nice and comfortably in my hand and all I'm going to do is pop it just against the edge of the soap and just pull down on it and that is how we end up with those soapy scrap bits that go into our um, confetti soaps so all I do is I do my long side or the the short sides I should say and I do the bottom on both sides as well I don't worry too much about doing I oh, just a little bit too much on that one that's better I don't worry too much about doing those bits because my mold actually already makes them quite round and smooth but it does just finish the soaps off really nicely and I'm going to do that on all of these soap bars so you don't need to put too much pressure well with this particular um, one you don't have to put too much pressure on it if you do you end up taking great big chunks which is why I actually do like this other um, vegetable peeler I've got because it's um, not as sensitive to pressure as this one is and all of these soapy bits I'm just going to put into my jug here I leave them to harden up just for a couple of days because when you do take these corners off the underneath of that soap is actually still quite soft because it hasn't gone through its full cure process um, so I just let my um, soapy shreds sit in my bucket for a couple of days before I am ready to um, pop them into the bag with all of my other um, little soapy shreds ready for the next confetti soap now the idea of waiting for your soap to actually harden up before doing this is so that you get these really nice crisp curls come off them if you are doing this when your soap is still soft it becomes all mushy and your um, your peeler will actually clog up with soap and you don't get those really nice sort of crisp lines on the edges of your soap here so I'm going to get all of these done up and then we will get them prepared for doing some stamping so now that I've got all of these beveled off it is time to go and stamp them and get them photographed so the next thing I do is I come over to my big table here and what I've got down on the table is one of my drops backdrops. I will leave links to the company. She is Australian um, but she has the most amazing photographic vinyl backdrops and at really really good prices and you can get them in all sorts of sizes as well. I did do an unboxing video um, showing the ones that I would got so I will leave a link to that video up in the corner so you can go and check that out. Um, but I do like to have the marble backdrop on my table. It, sometimes when you take photos against white, it's really hard to balance the colour and it just doesn't look right. But having those sort of streaks of grey through the, the white background um, makes it look a lot better and gives it a little bit more interest as well. So I like to have that on the surface here. These also clean up really well. So putting my soaps on them and things like that, um, it doesn't matter if you've got um, the odd soap mark on them because they just wash off and clean up really well so I really do like photographing on these I also have up here my big photographic light as well just to give me some extra light in here I don't get enough natural light in my studio to actually be able to um, take photos in natural light and today is a really great dull overcast day so there's not much light out there anyway so what I now do is I start to lay my soaps out on my bench as if I was going to take a photograph and I do have a look at the sort of the patterns on my soaps and see which ones I want where so I try and um do the colors that they're like these ones are all very yellow I will give you a closer look in a moment but they're all very yellow in color whereas that one's a bit wider so I'm just splitting them up looking at how we're putting them down making sure the one that I actually have stamped already which is that one isn't stamped again I have done that in the past I lay them all out stamp them and then realize the original one I did for the photo now has a stamp on the front and the back 
So I just make sure of that. Let's get the rest of these all laid down. It doesn't have to be perfect right now because when you stamp them they are going to move around. So now that I've got them sort of roughly laid out, I have got myself this acrylic stamp and I got this from off BB Collection. I'll leave a link to the website in the description box. He is based in Thailand, but he does ship any, well, I say he, it could be she that runs it, I really don't know, but they do ship anywhere in the world. And all I do is I line my stamp up where I want it to go on the soap. I have this mallet, which is specifically for use on my soaps and I just give it a couple of short taps. Because this soap has been sitting here well over a week it does need a couple of extra taps on it but if it's only a couple of days old it only needs one or two. You don't want to hit too hard otherwise you're going to really squish the design in there um, and you do get the outline of the soap stamp if you're not careful as well. So that's needing about four, so I'm doing two on each end. And I'm going to stamp all of these up. So now that I have got all of those stamped up, what I'm going to do now is just line them up ready for their photograph. So to do my photographs um, for YouTube, not necessarily how I'm going to photograph them to go on the website. I just use my phone. I've got a Galaxy S20. Absolutely love the camera on this. I am also starting to play around with the camera where you can do all the settings as well. But for the most part, I am just going to use the um, everyday camera mode that comes up and I'm going to use it at the full screen so that I can actually crop them down. I'm going to take angle, or I'm going to take photos from different angles. So I'll come up from above, I'll come from sides. Um, I will do some long and I will do, well, I'll do vertical and horizontal. So we'll end up some for Instagram stories, some for, um, for the YouTube photos as well. Um, so let me get into doing that. Once I've got a few with them flat, that is when I tend to do one of the other photos you see a lot at the end of my videos, if you ever get that far. And I stand that one up in the middle so that you can see both the sort of the actual design and the top of what my soaps look like. soaps done and sort of photographed. The next thing I have got, I've got my couple of little sample pieces. So they're just the end piece. I cut them in half and I have got another um, soap stamp and that one has just got my little S on it. And I always stamp my soap samples as well, just so that people know or start to recognize that brand. So they're done. Next thing to do is to go and pop these onto the curing rack and they'll take about, depending what the weather does, it'll be about four or five weeks before these are ready for sale. As I said, these have already been sitting here for about a week and a half. So they're only actually gonna be about another three to four weeks on my cure rack. Okay, so we are here at the Cure Rack and you can see it's looking lovely and full at the moment. This rack I actually built myself. I got all the parts from out of Kmart. I'm sure many other places do them as well. I bought the four legs and I bought the 1.8 meter legs and then I bought the size shelf and how many shelves I wanted and then just built it up to the height and sort of specifications that I wanted it to go. And then each of my shelves, just to avoid getting lines on my soap, I line with some parchment paper. And all I'm going to do now is just actually, there's some space up here, I'm just gonna pop them all on the top. Thank you. 
with my two little sample pieces they just go on the front as well just like so and now they're going to sit there for um, the number of weeks I've actually got them listed down in soap maker I put the date in which I make them so I can keep track of when they are actually cured so when they are cured I am going to take you along and show you then how I package them up so I'll see you in a bit but it will be a couple of weeks for me So it's been 30 days since I actually put the Hawaiian Honey Blossom soaps onto the curing rack and they are now ready to be uh, photographed, wrapped and popped onto the shelf and put onto the website ready for sale. So what I first of all do, as you saw, I grab myself a tray and I pop it onto the scales and I tear it out to get rid of the weight of the tray. I then go and grab the bars of soap that are ready, pop them onto the tray and then onto the scales. So now we can actually see that all of these soap bars come to a total weight of 2.254. So I'm going to pop that amount into my calculator. Uh, 2254 divided by 17 bars, which is what I've got here. And we get an average weight of 132.58 grams. So here in Australia, I am actually allowed to put down the average weight of my soaps onto my labels. There are some very strict rules regarding um, putting weights onto your products. I will leave a link down in the description box to an article that Australians may like to read. If you are in other countries, you do actually need to find out your country's rules and regulations when it does come to labeling your products. In regards to soap, I, am, I can actually put that sort of average weight. And the other thing I do is I also round that weight down to the nearest five grams. So in this instance, being 132, I'm actually going to put that weight onto my label as 130 grams because at some point that extra two grams is going to evaporate off of that soap as it continues to cure over its life. And that also then brings it back in line with the sort of um, discrepancies that we are allowed to have when it comes in terms of um, putting volume or weight onto the labels. Now before I actually do go and create my labels for these soaps, the first thing I need to go and do is take their photographs. Okay, so I am now all set up to start doing the photography. Um, the aim behind this is to get some photos which will go up onto the website and some for social media as well. When I do my online um, photos, I will take some that have got some suggested shots, so using some props and things like that as well. But I also like to have one very simple shot of just the product by itself. And this is one of those things, you know, when you see people, um, you'll see a bowl of cereal and it says on there, uh, milk not included or something like that. That is so that people don't think they're getting anything more included in their product So I like to take a very simple photo of the product that you're going to receive as sort of the cover photo for my website And then all the suggestion photos are within that product, but people are aware of what they're going to get So on my table I have my marble backdrop from off of drops backdrop I also have the custom um, drop that I got made with the peachy looking tile and I've got that hung 
up on the bar and I've also got my light as well. Now normally I would take the photos using my camera on my phone um, but one of my goals for 2021 is to actually improve my photography skills so I've been investing in props, backdrops, that sort of thing and I have also just recently, in fact last week, invested in a brand new DSLR camera and I am absolutely loving it so far. Um, this is a Canon 200D Mark II which I believe Believe is a Canon SL3 in the US not sure what it's called in the UK but I am absolutely loving it it's just one sort of step up from an entry-grade um, camera but it's not that professional either and um, it's got all the, the fancy buttons I know absolutely nothing about but I am slowly teaching myself how to use all the different features and as soon as I get my air conditioner fixed which has been broken for about two weeks now I have actually lined up with a local um, guy who does product uh, who does photography lessons in the city he's actually quite local to where I am and he's going to come to my studio and teach me how to do product photography composition and everything else that goes with it so I'll be learning how to use this a lot more today I'm going to do some shots with this and because it is my first time using it I will take some backup shots with the phone as well um, and then I will start getting them up onto the website onto social media and things like that so let me get stuck into doing that my labels printed up now I do cigar band labels on my soaps I'm not going to be using this video as as a way of showing you how to create the labels mainly because it's going to make this video way too long to do it on this particular one so I will create another video showing how I actually create these labels but the other problem is I actually use Corel draw and I'm slowly also going into Adobe Illustrator as well to create my labels and both of those programs are very expensive to actually have so if you don't have those programs it's not going to be very useful to people to watch how I actually make the labels so I'm going to try and find myself a program that everyone kind of can have access to it could be a free program something like that and then I'll show you how to actually create them in there because it's pretty much the same in all the sorts of different programs just some of them have it. it's a little bit easier than other programs that's all but I will make a completely separate video for doing that so what I do is I design my label, I can get six on my um, piece of card here, I've printed it up on a thin piece of card um, and now I'm just going to chop it up with the guillotine and my poor poor guillotine, um, it's seen better days, it's about nine years old, I have just ordered myself a brand new one which will hopefully be here in a couple of weeks, really gutted to have to give this one up because it's, it's been a right little workhorse but you can see there are absolutely no numbers numbers, no lines left on there. I have it tied up with a piece of ribbon because one day I actually dropped it and broke the um, the little safety catch off it <laughs> so it doesn't actually catch down anymore um, but it still cuts really well so that is what I'm going to do here now. So whenever I do actually print up my labels I have actually got lines on here. I'll see if I can give you a bit more of a close-up. I actually do print them with lines and that is because I don't have any markings left on my board here so I do rely on the lines on here to give me nice accurate cuts 
and I do prefer to use a guillotine. I find that the paper trimmers, they get blunt really, really quickly and if you have a blunt blade in your paper trimmer, um, it can give some really awful um, lines. With your guillotines, you can usually actually take them apart and get the, this blade bit actually sharpened. It's not actually sharp to touch, but it does cut through paper and card really, really well. And then when it does, when you do start to see little sort of um, jagged lines, you just undo up here and then you can take it down to any of your sort of knife sharpening people. Or if you do have a stone for doing knife sharpening, you can also run these blades through a stone. So I'm only going to do six of them at the moment. I have actually done the others because I realised that the camera was not recording. So I have got my um, six labels done. All I am now going to do is grab one of my um, stamp bar or one of my soap bars. I'm going to start on the side that doesn't have the stamped part. I'm going to start with my ingredients on the back here, and then I just wrap it around making sure to pull it up tight. And when I get this little bit up the top here, I tuck it in underneath the back. And then I have some sticky tape and I prefer to use sticky tape to hold my labels together rather than using glue because I always get worried that bits of glue are going to get onto the soap and I just don't think that is very um, hygienic for um, for selling products that way so I do prefer to use tape now what you can actually buy in many of the stationery stores now usually the sort of the higher end stationery stores not your um, your cheap department stores is you can buy biodegradable tape I have both biodegradable packing tape and I have also just bought myself some biodegradable rolls of sticky tape so once this roll's gone I will be using biodegradable tape on all of these products as well. So I'm just going to get the rest of these um, all wrapped up. And then I do actually have one other thing to show you before we head on over to the wrapping station. So when I was showing you how I actually do the beveled edges on my soap, I said that I was missing my favourite um, vegetable peeler for doing it. Now I still can't find where that vegetable peeler has gone. It must have fallen off my bench and into the bin because I've done a huge deep clean in here and I, just, I can't find where it's gone so that's my only thought is it's fallen into the bin and I've been trying desperately to find another one like it without much success but we were shopping in a department store called Big W which is over here in Australia and I was in the kitchen section and I came across a very similar peeler. I like this one because it sits nicely in my hand but some people actually may not like this particular particular design. It's a little bit more um, bulkier, a little bit more ergonomic than my last one so it actually sits into the sort of curve in the palm of your hand. And the other major difference with this one and my old peeler is the actual blade in here. Now I can do that because it's not a metal blade, it is actually a ceramic blade instead. It is actually still quite sharp, you can feel that it's sharp but it doesn't cut quite much quite like a, a metal blade. I wouldn't recommend dragging your finger across it but it does feel a little bit safer to actually touch um, with your finger and it cuts really nicely. So I got these soaps. These were a fail soap. <laughs> um, it was a really really humid day. I was trying to do a pour and it just it didn't work. They ended up being really short. Different mould. Awful soap. <laughs> I have actually got plans for these but just to show you how well this one actually works and why I actually prefer it is as you actually pull down I'll grab that little soapy curl oh it's really quite thin I don't know if it's gonna um, actually let me see if I can get another piece and then I'll put it into the palm of my hand so that is the little curl oh that you get off of these this particular um, peeler and it is much finer than what I get from off of the other peeler. I mean the camera may not show too much of a difference but this piece over here is actually slightly thicker than what this piece is um, and it's just got that sort of it's taken off a lot more off the corner than what this one can. I personally find with this style of peeler that it is easier to handle. I don't push down on it unevenly. I just pull it and I get nice even um, little curls come off my soap. Whereas when I used that other one I did to um, 
bevel the corners of that Hawaiian honey blossom um, I find that I can quite easily push down and um, dig out sort of pieces as I go along whereas I personally find using this sort I don't end up digging down into my soap it just glides straight off but we all are very very personal with the type of veggie peelers that we use I actually can't use this style for um, for peeling carrots in the house <laughs> so I actually use the style like I hate for my soaps to peel my veggies in the house because it came in a pack of two and I had one for in the shed and one for in the house and I actually do like that one for peeling veggies in the house hate it for doing soap love doing this one for soap but hate using this style for veggies weird I know but anyhow we are going to go over to the packing station and we're going to go and get these wrapped all right, so I'm over in the packing sort of station here. The first thing I'm going to do is actually turn on the power source to my National Hink Heat Shrink Wrap Machine, and that is so it starts warming up. What I am going to do is quickly show you something. I am pretty impressed with this camera. I don't think it picks up too much external noise, but just in case, you may hear a fan in the background, and this is why. That is my baby girl, Lucy. She's only allowed in the sort of shop area once everything has been wrapped. And um, it's been so hot and with the air conditioning broken, I bought in this fan over here. And I've had it in here while I've been packing um, orders just to keep me cool while I'm doing that. And um, she's now decided that fan is hers. And when she comes in, if I've not turned that fan on, she sits there barking at it until I turn it on and then she sleeps there on the floor in front of the fan and we're all happy. <laughs> so if you can hear that fan, I do apologize, but if I turn that fan off, she's gonna get cranky with me. So let's get these soaps wrapped. So to wrap my soaps, I like to use the National Shrink Wrap Machine. I actually invested in this machine about, must be about five years ago. We actually got it when we first moved into this house. It was one of those things that when we moved, um, we had a little bit of money left over to buy furniture and stuff like that and hubby gave me the money to actually buy the um, shrink wrap machine because he knew how much I actually wanted to get one so that was sort of my my housewarming present was my sh national shrink wrap machine but I tell you what it has been such a great investment there are a couple of little tips and tricks I will share with you that I have learned about using this machine um, and also where to get it from so first of all, where do you go and get it? You have to go to National Shrink Wrap to actually buy this machine directly from them. They don't have any on sellers. You may find it from some secondhand sort of sellers that way, but if you want a brand new one, you have to go directly to them. They are based in the US, um, but honestly, the shipping and everything else is well worth it for the time and energy that it actually does save you to use this um, whole setup. Um, I also have buy in the biodegradable film to wrap all my products in. And for those of you in Australia, you can normally pick up rolls of shrink wrap film from a couple of different places. But if you are after these biodegradable ones, you do have to go to National Shrink Wrap to buy them. Nowhere here in Australia are willing to sell to small businesses on that sort of um, that sort of material. Um, some of the things I have learned about using the National Shrink Wrap just tips and, and little tricks to make sure that it works well for you. I usually always turn my wand on about three to four minutes before I am ready to use it. It doesn't heat up like an iron, but it does start getting that heat running through it, which means when you first go to use it, the, um, the shrink wrap material is going to cut nice and easily from the get-go. Um, sometimes you'll find if you use it straight away it may not give a nice clean cut but if you let the machine warm up just slightly um, you'll always get those nice clean cuts. Okay so the other thing, the other little tip I will give to you is when you actually get the machine, so you get your your piece to put your roll on, you get your arm and then you get your mat. So we've got this um, piece of red rubber which is your heat proof side of things and then underneath that you've got this um, sort of mat made with a compressed material. You do need to have that softness under the mat to allow the machine to actually push down onto the film and then allow that cut to happen. It's not a cut like you would have with scissors but it is a melting of the material to separate it apart so you do need those two layers but what I do find because my surface is quite um, smooth it slips and slides so whenever I put mine down I always pull 
just a little bit of this red further past the mat underneath and then I sit my um, roll on top of it so that my mats don't slide down the um, the bench while I'm using it and that just holds it all nicely in place but enough about that let's get these wrapped so the first thing I'm going to do is just pull out my roll here because I've already been using them the end is already sealed if it's your first time pulling this out all you need to do is pop your wand on it seal it and then you can start going as I said this is already sealed I because these are quite short soaps I know with the size of mine I can actually get four of them going down here like this and all I need to do is pop them just on the inside here so I've got the two layers it's got a center fold down the back here So I've got 16 soaps laid out. What I'm now going to do, this is actually warm. You can actually touch it. It's not, it just feels warm. It doesn't feel like it's going to burn. I'm just going to lay it down. And what I tend to do is I hold down on my one end here and I slide my bar along. And that is to stop it from actually bunching up, up on this top corner. What I find if I don't slide it along, I end up with a sort of like bunch of film up in the top center fold. And when I go to push it down, um, because it's so thick where it's all bunched up, it doesn't um, melt through. So now I've held that down. It, by pushing it down, it actually create, um, makes two nodes or two switches inside touch, a bit like an electrical current, or it creates the electrical current basically, creates some heat. And if I just tip it back towards me, I should then be able to pull those cleanly away. And now we can see this is actually split off. All I'm gonna do now is come along to my next four. I use my wand just to bump them down. I'm gonna slide that up and into place. I'm going to do the same thing again. Now I'm actually going quite slowly just to show you, but you don't have to hold it down for that long. And you can actually go quite quickly I'm going to do the next ones here and then these final four and again just making sure I slide that along and it's always best just to tip the wand backwards a little bit just to lift it up from off the, the, um, the, the film so that it will actually separate now we can actually go the other way so just kind of slide my wand in between them and push down and again I'm going to pull it back towards me and then these ones all just pull off the back and then I don't quite have enough room in there so I'm just going to make sure I've got enough room push down and then they come off nice and easy and I should be able to get four in it this way maybe they're a little bit higher than what I'm thinking but we'll find out in a moment I should be able to get four might not be able to get that one we'll see I'm just going to do these ones one at a time um, usually I'd be able to do all four of those last ones together but these must just be slightly higher than what I'm thinking um, and I think that one might I'm not going to be able to do that one that's okay I've got this one here you want to make sure that you're not pushing them too tight otherwise you end up splitting the seams but that's looking good now what I usually do if I have got a piece like this and I'm not going to be able to use that piece all I do is I take that piece of film and I tuck it inside the end of my roll in here I think I've actually ended up using it all the other day but in here I've usually got some yep piece in there I've got lots of little pieces in here so when it comes time to wrapping smaller things I usually see what is inside my roll and I use all of those bits up so we've just got these last two to do here this time around I'm actually going to put the soaps in this way instead of that way and that is just so I don't use as much of the film that way I can usually only get three soaps if I put them in this way. 
a while back up. And then that piece there just gets tucked in. So when I come to do one of my other soaps, I just see if I've got any like last ones, I'll see what's in there that can be used. And there we've got them all wrapped up, nice, easy and quick. So the um, heavens have just opened up, it is now raining, so you're probably going to hear that on camera, but I'm determined to get this video finished for you so we can get it loaded up in time. Um, what we're going to do now is actually shrink wrap this film, and um, one of the things I like to use is this thing. I got this in a de-stash box, but you can get these at most places that sell cake decorating sort of um, utensils and that's all it is, is a cake decorating turntable so you'd sit your cake on there and then you actually turn that round but the reason I actually like it is I'll pop it down on my bench and what I now do is I pick up however many soaps pop them onto my little turntable so the next thing I'm going to do is grab my heat gun and I absolutely love this heat gun this is the second one I've actually had um, I've had two in the last six years and I absolutely love this particular one. If you are here in Australia, this is the Ozito um, heat gun which can be picked up in Bunnings. Um, it's the only place I know of that does it. And what I love about this heat gun is not only does it have this slow and fast um, speed settings on here, it also has this dial up here which um, controls the temperature at which it, um, it blows hot air out at. I have found when I use the biodegradable film, I need a much cooler air than if I was say shrink wrapping say the lip balm tubes or something like that, where that particular film needs a little bit more heat to get it to shrink down. So I absolutely love this one. It sits nicely in the hand. It's really robust. The number of times I've actually dropped this on the floor and it still works for me as well. So I absolutely love this heat gun. If you're here in Australia, I highly recommend it. It gets used for all sorts of things. And you can easily swap between your candles and your shrink wrapping and anything else that might need a little bit of heat. So now that I've got that, I'm just gonna start shrink wrapping this. I use my little turntable to actually turn the soaps, which enables me to do that many soaps soaps without it sticking to the table and causing all sorts of grief. So it's nice and quick. Let's get them shrink wrapped. So they are all done. So what you would have seen me doing there when I do the shrink wrapping, I start by heating the sides and I just go around and I heat all the sides until they are nice and smooth. And then I go back and I heat the front and the back of them. Now the really, really important thing when you are heat, uh, when you're actually shrinking stuff with heat, is to constantly keep that heat source moving. If you hold that heat source in one spot for too long, especially if you don't have temperature temperature control um, that is when your shrink wrap starts to form those holes and starts to burst apart so it's really important to keep that um, actually moving now that is pretty much it the next thing I'm going to do is go and pop these over onto the shelf um, ready for me to be able to pick as orders come in tonight I am going to go and get them loaded onto the website so by the time that you see this video these are actually already live and up on the website ready to go so I hope you have enjoyed watching how I go through the whole processes of treating the soap after you've seen that final cut of the, the soap in the videos. If you did, why not leave me a thumbs up, any comments down below, and until the next video comes out, I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you then. Bye.